the list of business development designations here. If I change the selection here, the list in this drop down will also change. Welcome to the channel Simplified. In this video, we will learn how to create a dynamic drop down menu where the drop down options will change based on the input provided in a previous cell. For example, we have a data sheet here that needs to be filled up with some employee details. This column is for entering the department data where there are two choices, analytical department and business development department. We have already done data validation and the source has been linked to this list here. Similarly, we have a list of designations here, which is used as a source for the data validation in this column here. So if you click on the drop down, you can see the entire list. But if you look at the designations, these designations are for the analyst or the analytical department, which are analyst, senior analyst, associate and so on. Whereas the business development team's designations are manager, assistant manager, senior manager and so on. So it would be ideal if I could get only the analytical designations when I select the department as analytical rather than seeing the whole list. And when I select business development, only those relevant options should come. So how can we do that? First, we will create a backend table for mapping. We will ignore this for now. Here I will enter the department name against each of the designations. So all of this are analytical. So I will put analytical here and all of these are for business development. So I will enter that here. The order of the column doesn't matter here. I can put designations first or department first. It won't matter much. Now in this sheet, when someone enters analytical here, I need to get a new list of only the analytical designations. We can get such a list using the filter function. For that, I will enter filter here, open brackets, the first one says array. Array is the list what I need in the output. What I need here is a list of designations. So I will go here and select the designations. I can also select more cells if I think I might expand this list in future. I could create some provision for that. But for now, we'll just select this data. After comma, I need to select what I want to filter by. Basically, I need to set the criteria for filtering. The criteria will be based on the department. So I will select all the department list here and is equal to link it to this. So in this list from C18 to C29, whatever is equal to this, which is analytical, that will get filtered out. So this whole section is about deciding what is the criteria for filtering. And this section is about what data I want as the output. Here I have put the B column where the designations are there. When I hit enter, we can see the list. Now we need to be careful about reference freezing. We may copy this formulas left or right or top and bottom and we don't want it to change. So the reference to the table, we will freeze it by adding dollar symbol. So we'll use the shortcut F4 which will add a dollar symbol before each column and row reference. Now, if I select business development here, this section will become is equal to business development. So what is happening in the background is that it is applying a filter in column C, selecting whatever is equal to business development and giving me the list from the resultant column B. So I get this list of business development designations. So now we are able to get a dynamic list that changes with the entry in this cell. One thing to remember here is that the formula is present only in the first cell. There are no formulas here, even though the data is appearing. But if you type some other data here, it will give an error because there is not enough space for all the data to come over here. So now we are getting a list for the entry that I made in this row. I will need a different list for the entry that I make in row number 3 and another list for the entry that I make in row number 4. So because we can't enter data below this row, what we will do is we will use the transpose function. I will enclose this in the transpose function by entering transpose here, open bracket and close it at the end. Now I get a horizontal list instead of a vertical list that gives me the space 
to enter formulas below it. So I can just drag this down. And if you remember, we froze the table references, which is linked to this sheet, this data here. But this link to this cell has not been frozen. So when we drag it down, the reference will go down as well. You can see for selection in row two, it is linked to this and selection in row three is linked to this. These ones are giving an error because there are empty values here. We have not set the criteria. In fact, there is an option here after array and criteria to tell the filter function what it should do if the criteria selection is empty. We can put open double quotes and close double quotes, which indicates a blank value. So now whenever these values are empty here, I will get the output as blank. So the error will not appear. Now finally coming to the data validation part. We will select the entire range where we want the drop down to appear. Let's say till row 50. After selecting all this, click on data validation and in the source, it was earlier linked to this entire list. We will delete that and select this horizontal list, which corresponds to this selection in the first row. Now we don't have to select the entire row till 50 in the source. We only need to select a single row for the first drop down option over here. We will select as many columns as there could be data. So I'll give a buffer and select some more cells. Now the most important part is that the dollar symbol, which is there by default has to be removed. And then when you hit OK, the first row here gets its input for data validation from this row, which we selected. And the second row will get the input for data validation from this row. Because we removed the dollar symbol, the source won't be static. As we go down the rows, the linking will also go down to the corresponding row. And there you have it, a list of analytical designations here and a list of business development designations here. If I change the selection here, the list in this dropdown will also change. With this video, I hope not only you have learned how to create such a dynamic dropdown, but also the line of thinking of how we approach the problem and solve it as well. So if you do happen to use it, let me know in the comments below. And also do hit the like button if you learned something new and useful and subscribe to stay tuned for more.